What's up everybody? I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the new AMG ePlatform. And I'm not even sure if that's its name, but <laughs> let's let's get right into it. Basically, this is an electrified platform that will add a 150 kilowatt, which is the peak, about a 200 horsepower peak engine or motor or whatever in the rear. And this is a really interesting bit of technology because it uses um it, it, it's integral to the differential and uh, it's like an all-in-one differential pack all right so you gets mechanical power it splits the mechanical power as a limited slip differential and it has a two-speed electric motor in it it'll be really interesting to see if this electric motor slows it down at all I'm glad they went with a two-speed motor instead of just you know one uh, because that is one of the issues with the NSX front wheels. Uh, sometimes you can go kind of faster than they can help with. And um, it looks like it's a pretty well thought out car. Uh, it is very different from the 53 platform, which is which is very interesting. Um, and I, I'm not sure exactly why, to be honest. But uh, I, I guess I'll speculate on that later. So let's just keep talking about this guy for a little bit. Uh, one of the things to note is that the horsepower numbers you're probably seeing, like the 650 for the C63 and the 700 or 800 for the maybe the 73 model, uh, which would be like an E and the CLS maybe or a GT, um, those are peak numbers. So the 150 kilowatt out, you know, output of this motor in the back, uh, the, the motor differential unit, if you will, is, is a peak number. The, the continuous number is 70 uh, kilowatts. That's the a, that's a continuous power it can hold. So, um, or they can handle, if you will. So that's uh, that's 90 horsepower. So it's about 110 horsepower left. So um, even that number may not be completely available if the batteries are diminished or whatever. But you can kind of get an idea of what the power would be, you know, in general, like a root mean square type of a power, you know, like an actual power, continuous power, if you will, of these cars by taking the um, taking those numbers and subtracting by 110. So like for example the 650 horsepower in the C63 subtract that by 110 horsepower and that'll give you the uh, total combined output of the uh, electric motor continuous power plus the uh, the you know internal combustion engine. So what we're seeing there is probably like a 540 horsepower uh, car, and uh, that would be like about 460 horsepower from the internal combustion engine, and that should be available always. And hopefully there's not any vampire conditions, because if you've ever driven like a Prius or something like that through the mountains, you would know that uh, sometimes there can be uh, a vampiristic, like the 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 engine can actually take some of the power, the mechanical power, and generate additional, uh, you know, battery power, if you will. Um, so sometimes that actually diminishes your power. But taking that out of the equation, I don't know enough about it to comment on it right now. Taking that out of the equation, we're looking at, uh, at probably like a 400 you know, 50 or 460 horsepower unit in the AMG uh, for the C. Um, and uh, it should be very similar to what we see in the 45. And uh, and then probably about 90 horsepower of electric continuous and until your battery is deplete. Because the battery pack isn't huge. It's not the smallest. It's kind of interesting. So it's liquid cooled. Very interesting battery pack. But it's um, you know 400 volts, but I mean you can run out of that power, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll run out of it going up one of those hills in on I-70 through the mountains in Colorado or something similar. Um, but hopefully it just disengages completely and allows your car to keep you know plowing up, and it somehow notices that you're using enough power to not try to regenerate in that situation. They did go with battery packs. Um, which is, is pretty, I guess, uh, you know, normal, par for the course. I'd really like to see some of these cars start to use um, capacitors in this type of an application. I think that would probably be a better bet because uh, they can instantly discharge and they can pretty much instantly recharge. So 
like uh, when you're braking on a battery pack, you can only take so much of that power or else you're going to overload the battery. Also, the battery packs can't discharge all the power at once, whereas, you know, a capacitor could recharge almost instantly on a hard brake and also recharge or discharge almost instantly. So it'll be really interesting to drive these cars. I, I think my impression is that they're going to be faster off the line. Um, and they're probably, it'll be interesting to see how they do overtaking, you know, like from 100 to 150 miles per hour. It'll be interesting to see their top speed too, because the electric motor, unless it completely disengages, could reduce the top speed a little bit. Um, we're looking at, a, like with the V8 horsepower, uh, the V8 engine, it, it, they haven't confirmed it yet, but it'll probably be about 750 horsepower, maybe 800 horsepower. 800 horses uh, that peak again number so we'll subtract another 100 horsepower 110 horsepower from that so it's let's say it's 750 horsepower so we'll probably get about uh, I don't know 640 horsepower from the internal combustion engine which is which is pretty strong um, and I think that strength goes partially to the fact that you're now have an exhaust plus electric turbo um, and that'll be much more instantaneous. The power of the delivery will be nice. That part I'm actually really excited about. The electric turbos are pretty cool. That's pretty exciting. The boost control is also a lot better because I think it's going to be electrically actuated. Um, and so there's going to be some positive parts of this car, even if you're a pure gas uh, person, you know. Uh, and it, it's, it's interesting because the starter and generator or you know the alternator, if you will, is belt powered, so it's more of a traditional setup um, on the you know whatever they call it, the AMG E platform or whatever. So it'll be really interesting to see how it runs. I, that part was surprising to me. Um, I have a feeling these cars are not going to be quite as smooth from turn off to turn on as maybe the 53 will. Um, I don't know what the plans are, if the 53 type of architectures was going to be used for um, just that car, or maybe in the future, you know, the mid-level cars are going to get that, and then the AMGs will get this treatment. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, what would be the equivalent of the 580 or 600 or 560, like, you know, basically the AMG engines that are maybe not quite as tuned or whatever, um, that are put in, like, the big S-Class or the G-Wagon. So this is kind of interesting. It, it's we now have three platforms um, that are pretty distinct from Mercedes Benz that are somewhat electrified. We have the pure electric one, um, and that, that's kind of an interesting platform. I haven't driven one yet, uh, and that's split into two so far. Then we have the 53, which is an inline six, plus the electric uh, supercharger and turbocharger. Um, and that one is, you know, traditional engine and then, you know, something behind it, like a, like a motor generator starter plus uh, it goes right back. And I think that uses 48 volts. These AMG E's will use 400 volts in the back. The weight distribution should be pretty solid. Um, from a tuner's perspective, these are going to be really interesting to work with. I think you, they are going to be able to get a lot of power out of them. You're going to be able to control the boost very easily, uh, very well, I think. The wastegates are going to be probably pretty quick. Um, what they're doing is really helping bridge some of the gaps of the turbo might lag, so they're going to reduce turbo lag a lot. They might be able to go with much bigger turbos in the future, and I think they should because there's a lot of power in those exhaust gases, and now you can manage the wastegates effectively. That's why I was hoping that we could have gotten more closer to a thousand horsepower. We should have better launches, like our we should be able to drop some good time off of our quarter miles plus like the zero to sixties. Um, this case, I think that you're going to get some kind of you know like a smarter launch control, um, smarter boost application. On the other hand, we didn't get the horsepower numbers that were rumored, you know. Uh, and the rumors I heard were something more like the 53 with a lot of power behind it. Uh, so this is very different than that. Um, this is a really interesting application of a limited slip differential into a motor 
it's it's it is interesting. Um, it's it's going to really balance the car in terms of weight distribution. So there, there's going to be some good things about it. These are going to be engines that uh, should push Mercedes further in you know zero to sixties quarter miles. It'll be it remains to be seen how these will work in terms of um, rolling. You know like 100 to 150 miles per hour. Um, it remains to be seen how this affects top speed. And I'll just throw this out there. Apparently these go up to 80 miles per hour on all electric. They tried to go faster than that, but they were having some problems with, you know, the flux capacitors and whatever. Um, all right, really bad joke. But anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time.